one day and all of a sudden you look in the mirror and you're like, how did I get this old? You know, and God bless us, you know, and uh, those of you who are uh, young listening to KFGO today, you know, if God blesses you and you do get to age, nothing happens between now and then. One day you'll be in these shoes as well. And when you get to this age and you get to retire and you are moving on, uh, you know, one of the things that you're going to have are more prescription drug costs because that's simply the nature of the beast part of aging and again frankly on the other side uh, one of the miracles of modern medicine but then the costs fall into play and so if there's a way to get north dakota retired persons on a fixed income prescription drugs that they absolutely positively have to take at a lower rate can you imagine there's anybody that is opposed to that Maybe somebody who sells drugs for a higher price would be opposed to that. I'm not sure. Well, let's jump in because there are three bills that are apparently trying to make their way uh, in front of the legislature that would ease the ability for people to get uh, foreign prescriptions, uh, mainly, I'm guessing, from Canada. The state director of AARP, Josh Asquig, is joining us from Bismarck this afternoon. Hi, Josh. How are you today? I'm great, Dan. How are you? I'm super. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Josh, I hope you can shine some light on this. And ultimately, what I'm hoping to get accomplished by having you on today is uh, ways that you can let us all know that all have a stake in this. And we all do. If you plan on aging at one time in your life, we all have a stake in this and what we can do to make sure that the correct bill gets passed in the North Dakota legislature. But let's start at the top. Uh, You have sent me information on three bills, Josh, that are trying to make their way through the legislature that would lower the cost or uh, ultimately, I guess they would do that, but it's more like easing the ability to get foreign prescriptions. Can you walk us through this issue, Josh? Sure. So uh, let me let me just back up for a second, Dan. And, and first of all, thank you for having us today and, and giving us a chance to tell your listeners a little bit about why we're at the Capitol fighting for lower prescription drugs for older North Dakotans, but quite frankly, all North Dakotans. And, and so let me define the issue for, for your listeners a little bit. Um, for older uh, older North Dakotans or, or Americans, they typically take four and a half prescription drugs um, on a chronic basis. And between 2012 and 2017, the average annual cost of prescription drug treatment um, increased by 57.8% or almost 58%. And during that same time, which were pretty good years for North Dakota, if you think about what was happening with our economy at that time, North Dakotans' annual income only increased 6.7%. Hmm. Dig just a little bit farther underneath and realize that um, Americans can often pay double or more what similar countries pay for brand name drugs. And, and it, we started hearing and seeing this from our members when we were doing events around the state. And we've, we've heard it for a number of years, but really been hearing about it again recently and started having conversations about what we could do and how we could stand up for older North Dakotans, but all North Dakotans uh, to fight for this. And so, you know, the the high cost of prescription drugs isn't just an older North Dakotans issue, but we did some quick surveying. We we did that in 2020 and found out one in four um, North Dakota residents age 45 plus didn't fill a prescription in the last two years. Of those who didn't, 44% said they didn't fill it because because of the cost. And furthermore, 65% of them said they were at least somewhat concerned about being able to afford them going forward. And so from those things, we we had an, uh, worked with Senator Howard Anderson out of Turtle Lake and introduced um, three different bills. Um, two of them are essentially identical. It's just who would manage the program to allow for safe wholesale importation of prescription drugs from Canada. And then a third one is um, if there were concerns about safety, you know, for us, it's, it's not where the dr- drug comes from as long as it's safe. It's about the price of that drug and really trying to help consumers' pocketbooks be able to afford these medicines that are often um, being further and further out of reach because of the price. And so the third one um, is actually what, what I've called the price importation bill or essentially sets a uh, upper payment limit or um, – uh, a, a, a maximum price that wholesalers, uh, retailers, and pharmacists could charge consumers um, based off of what the similar prices are in um, certain provinces in Canada is part of it. So, so there's there's three different bills. One, uh, two of them would provide wholesale safe importation, 
uh, to allow um, wholesalers, prescription drug wholesalers, so not individual importation. We know individuals do that already. This would really be trying to save when you've had a pandemic like we have, um, you know, and they can't get across the border right now, um, give them access to um, drugs at a, a much more affordable price as part of it. And again, the nuance between those two is one would be run by the North Dakota Department of Health, one by the Board of Pharmacy. And does it matter to you who runs it? Yeah, for us, it doesn't. For us, it's about what, how can we safely, efficiently, and affordably um, ensure that North Dakotans can get access to those prices. You know, in Canada, sometimes the exact same drug is, uh, you know, 40, 30, or even 20 percent of what people would pay here in Canada. And, you know, I recited a number of statistics at, at the top. But for us, it's, it's not just numbers on a page. It's people. We've heard from right. folks like Mike, who lives in Fargo mm-hmm. and in your listening area. And, you know, he he pays uh, close to $1,700 um, before insurance. With insurance, I think it's down to about $100 um, for some eye drops. He can get the exact same treatment from um, a, another company or another country for $60. And by the way, he's he's done that, and he's got photos that, that he shared with us of it's the exact same packaging. It's the exact same warehouse it comes from. Uh, it, it works. And so, uh, so why, 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 Josh, able, why the variance of these prices in different countries? Well, uh, you know, I think there's a, a number of reasons. Uh, I think part of it is that some countries, um, and I'll just use Canada as an example, they, they set upper payment limits. Oftentimes they set um, the, the maximum price that folks can be charged to ensure that there's equal equitable access for folks um, to do so. And so, uh, again, I think that's one why we have the third bill that would say, let's index our prices. And, and if you're going to sell drug uh, prescription drugs in, in North Dakota, that you can't charge more than um, our Canadian neighbors do. It doesn't mean you can't set your own price. You just can't set it above um, what that, that, that ceiling would be. And, and so I think uh, looking at that, I think the other part of it is, uh, you know, we, we've heard from the opposition and, and, um, you and I were talking a little bit before this, you know, uh, make make no no bones about it. Uh, Big Pharma and the industry were very present in the hearings on Wednesday. Um, they, they are very much opposed to seeing um, movement in this direction. And, and it's going to be important for your listeners to, to know that and reach out to their local legislators. If if you have a story to tell about your prescription drugs, tell that story to your local legislator. Make sure they know because I, I guarantee you they're hearing from um, the pharma and the manufacturers and, and some of the others that don't want to see um, uh, their, their um, monopoly in some places, or certainly not a, if not a monopoly, the corner that they have on the market um, lessened. Uh, and, in, and, and for us, it's about ensuring that North Dakotans can pay less and, and afford their prescription drugs. Josh, I just uh, find it hard to believe that uh, this is even a political issue, that there's a right or a left on this, because uh, why would you be opposed to older or any North Dakotan uh, getting a prescription drug price? You know, no one's asking for a prescription drug price that's going to undercut the company or put the company out of business because you're not paying them enough. We're asking for the prescription drug prices to be a little bit more uniform to places like Canada. I can't imagine anybody is opposed to that. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite stories is a gentleman by the name of Dennis. He lives here in Bismarck, where I'm located. And um, we actually have a, a video of him on our Facebook page. And Dennis says exactly what you said, which is, listen, I, I'm not opposed to them making a profit. But when I'm literally having to consider going back to work, just to afford my insulin, that's a problem. Yeah. And, and we, 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 we need to do something about it. And so for us, you know, I, I will say this, Dan, for your listeners, and again, I want to stress, your listeners you need to reach out to your local legislators. If you don't know who that is, um, you can find information on the AARP North Dakota uh, website, and we've got different links and places where folks can find um, ab- out about the work we're doing at the North Dakota legislature, and as well as connect with us um, to, to reach out to them. But um, I, I cannot stress enough the importance of sharing those stories and, and lifting them up because that's what's going to uh, make a difference. And for us, it isn't a partisan issue. It's not 
red, blue, you know, we're a nonpartisan membership based uh, organization. Um, we don't endorse candidates. We don't do any, it, it for us. It's about what's good po public policy for older North Dakotans um, for us. And, and I would, I, I want to circle back. It's not just older North Dakotans. We've heard stories um, from uh, young individuals who rely on insulin because they're a diabetic um, that could see benefits from these types of policies uh, as well to, to help drive down the cost of prescription drugs. Josh, thanks a ton for walking us through this. The bottom line is you're saying is contact your representative, your senator from your district and let them know that you need this these bills passed. That's absolutely critical. If you want to see prescription drug relief through the North Dakota legislative session, you need to reach out to your North Dakota senators and North Dakota representatives um, right away and let them know that you want to see these bills passed. Because, again, I guarantee you the industry is doing that um, every day. Josh, how often do you go to the Capitol and bang your head against the wall? <laughs> well, I'm grateful that every day I get to go to the Capitol, I know I've got 84,000 North Dakotans standing behind me. And that um, I, I, I tell you, Dan, there are these issues like this one where um, I have no doubt um, that our members support it and our members believe in it. In fact, in the same survey I quoted earlier, 81 percent of older North Dakotans, 45 plus, that they support safe, legal importation of prescription drugs from Canada. And so uh, I know they've got my back every day. My folks used to do that as well, too. So everybody that's a member of AARP and everybody that uh, thinks this is the right thing to do, you know what you need to do now. Joel Asvig, state director of AARP. Joel, excuse me, Josh, I hope it's not the last time that we get the uh, opportunity to, to talk about these issues coming up. Call any time. And again, call your legislator today and let them know you support prescription drug importation. Josh Asvig, state director of AARP. Josh, have a wonderful evening and a great weekend. Thanks so much. You too. Thanks, Dan. Take care. Josh Aspig today. KFGO time is 424. You're listening to The Drive on the Mighty 790 and 104.7 FM KFGO. Covering the Dakotas and western Minnesota with 100,000 watts on 104.7.